Oh, these are little collages. I forgot I did these out of the rice paper. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Oh, you should see what I made last. Oh, hello. So are we live yet? Progress. We are live and we are recording. Um, okay, I should nice. record before. Sorry. Cool. <laughs> a little rusty. Yeah, but we'll just let people filter in. As yeah. usual. And I'm going to grab a couple more things. <laughs> oh, yeah. While I'm so beautiful. There. We could just leave that up. That's more than enough to welcome yeah. people. Yeah. It's much better than just my face. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your face is great too. <laughs> Welcome, whoever has joined us already. Let's see here. We got a beautiful spread of washi paper pieces that Karen made. We're getting our stuff together. <laughs> yes. Getting our yeah. stuff together or getting even more stuff together and letting yeah, people. I keep finding the more and more things in my stash that I want to <laughs> share. I would know? love to just tour your studio one day like in person like just go and open a drawer and see everything that's in there <laughs> yeah okay i got everything i wanted i think <laughs> i mean that is that's a lot yeah it's, that's it's awesome. but that's what you can do with the with rice paper that's why you know well we'll talk about this but definitely rice paper is something that everybody should have in their stash if they're a paper crafter if you're a paper crafter Rice paper is a, the must, a must have. Yes. Paper people love paper. Yes. <laughs> I mean, stuff that you can do with rice paper, you can't really do with other things. <laughs> yes, which I can't wait to which, see and which show. We'll go over, yes. <laughs> oh, it's so cool because even right there in front of us, you have such a variety of like textures and colors and like different mediums that you yeah, use. Yeah, like this is another, this is one. Of, I've been doing that. Oh, it's so satisfying. Ooh. This oh, fabric. I love that. Oh, it feels so good too. It feels like fabric. And I'm going to get it at my sewing machine now. I'm going to do some stitching with it. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. You can just like, I'm just going to use it as like a fabric because it is, it feels like it. It's oh. got that, you know, but that took a little work to get there and I'll explain it a little bit. I won't do it because it would take too long, but I can at least kind of explain it. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm actually looking at a card that somebody sent me before and they had sewn paper flowers and roses onto it, sewn paper to paper. Oh, so that, nice. That might be cool for them to see this technique. Yeah, or at least, yeah. yeah. Hello, Sue. Hello, Jean. Um, so we have on. about 10 people. It was 10. I think some more, someone else popped in, popped out. Hello, Julie. Julie loves rice paper for watercolor. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. fun. Um, so I think we are at a good place to get started. And this is going to be recorded so people can always go back if they missed anything later. Um, so we could just jump in. But welcome, everybody, oh. to another uh, Yasutomo Facebook Live. Um, today, we are going to be talking about washi paper. And there's so much for us to talk about and learn about from Karen. Um, so we have a variety of washi papers, also known as rice papers, um, in the Yasutomo line. They come in paper pads, paper rolls, um, loose leaf um, packs, and all different sizes, um, shapes and sizes. And so we get to see a variety of them today. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to pop those questions into the comments um, section and I will read them out to Karen as she goes. If it's something that she can answer like uh, during her demo or if it's something I can help you with, I'll go ahead and just uh, get back to you in the comments or verbally. And um, it's been a while since we did a Facebook Live, but in case there's anybody new joining us, we like to do giveaways. And so to enter the giveaway, Enter your first name with your initial of your last name and where you are watching from. And at the end of the video, I will randomly pick a name. And if it's you, comment something, comment that you're there. And I will follow up with you for how to get your prize. Um, and that's it for now. So I'm going to hand it over to Karen. Thank you all. Thank you, Phoebe. Uh, this is always so much fun. Uh, you know, rice paper is one of my favorite papers because of the strength and the durability and just the amount of things you can do with it. It's just crazy stuff. So I have all this 
a bunch of stuff here on my table. I'm going to move it off in a sec, but I'm just going to show you the variety of things you can do with rice paper besides doing ink painting. Um, traditionally, you know, ink painting would be, you know, where you use watercolors or, or inks. And this is one of our um, papers I'm going to show you in a little bit that uh, is a little unusual compared to other rice papers. Because rice paper, you kind of usually think, and even though rice paper is really not, there's no rice in it. I'm sure we all know that, but um, it's actually the term washi is much more uh, appropriate because washi is paper in, um, it's a Japanese word for paper. So, um, but the word rice paper comes from a long time ago, you know, trying to, uh, where it came from. It's kind of a, it's sort of a long, you know, history, the reason we call it that. But anyway, but the, what this paper is, the washi paper, it comes in a variety of textures and colors, it comes in, you know, um, pl uh, printed papers, it comes in blanks. But we at Yastomo have the blank paper so that you can create on it. So um, I'm just going to kind of go through some of the projects that you can do. Of course, watercolor, ink painting. Um, this one is edigami, which is the ink painting. Uh, this is um, and watercolor as well. Um, you can use it for collage. It's great. Uh, you get these wonderful torn edges that you wouldn't get if you, you know, otherwise. Um, it's great for folding. It folds beautifully. And then this is from a roll. I'll show you. Actually, this is from this roll of rice paper here. So it's, you know, very handy for folding because you get these long strips of paper. It also, you can see these pieces were folded out of some of the papers we have. Also encaustic printing, mono printing, um, just all, it's such a durable paper. You can see this is an encaustic piece. I'm just gonna stack all these up and <clears throat> I'm stick over these over here so they're out of my way. And uh, like I said, ink painting, mono printing, mark making. And this is something I've been kind of getting into lately. It's making uh, momigami, which is a fabric it, you create a fabric out of the paper and the rice paper is beautiful for that. And what I did with this is I painted it first with, uh, actually, no, I used a jelly plate for this one with acrylics. So you can see there's a little uh, print on that. And then I just use um, some oil and I put it in my hands and I got nice, nice moist hands and I crinkled it up. And this takes lots of time. It actually took maybe 20 to 30 minutes of just wrinkling and and unwrinkling and wrinkling until you don't hear a crunch anymore. So that was like, that's a very quick uh, tutorial on how to do that. But it's just really a very satisfying technique to do. So here's one here, it's very soft. I think I'm gonna sew, get my sewing machine out and do some sewing projects with this. So th that's what's wonderful about that. Um, then you can also use it to make collage papers. And this one has, I have some rice paper that I infused in, so in between some tissue paper actually, and these were done with ink ahead of time. So really fun stuff. This is uh, just some stamping. And I'm gonna show you this technique today because it's just so much fun. And you can see it kind of goes through on both sides making it a double-sided paper because of the uh, type of paper this is. This is the Kozo paper and I'm gonna share that, uh, show you that in a minute. Um, just some more little mono printing, stenciling. Um, I can even take uh, some of the rice papers that are smooth can be put through your laser jet or your inkjet printer. So they're very great for that. And this is another thing I've been having fun with. It's a, it's a shibori, which is a fold and die technique. And you get these beautiful patterns and deep depth. And I use this for collage papers, for book covers, all kinds of things. So this is um, using acrylic inks, you know, folding first and then dipping while it's uh, folded. And so that's how you get those kind of effects. Um, it's great for origami too. So it's just a really versatile stuff. Now that we have, um, Yasutomo has traditionally carried rolls like this, Kozo. It's called Kozo, it's really not, it's just a, it's a pulp based paper. And what's great about it is you get this nice, wide, long roll. So if you want to do long pieces or if you want to do a window screen, um, you've got this really nice, large, very long uh, strip that you can work with. Or if you want to fold it, uh, that's something I like to do. Anything I can fold it, I can, I will. Um, there, this has, you'll, you'll notice each of these papers have a different color. Like this is a prob probably a beautiful off-white or kind of a creamy white. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it's not a bright white. Um, but this paper we've had in, in our collection for a very long time. 
There's also some shorter rolls. This you can see the different color on this one. This one is a um, more of a it's a for scrolls or for calligraphy. But I like also to fold these. Now this one though, if you when you pull it out, it actually has seams every once in a while. There's a little seam somewhere in here. I know it's in there because it usually is. Um, but every every so yeah so often you'll feel it. Oh, there it is you'll see a seam. That's totally normal. This is how they connect the papers so that you have a long strip, but they still are very nice papers to write on. Um, you'll notice that there is, when you get rice paper, you'll feel a smooth side and a rough side. There's a purpose for that. The smooth side, of course, is for writing on and painting and drawing. And the rough side, I actually um, it's, it's probably because of the manufacturing process, but I like to laminate or fuse my papers together. It's also called back coating in the origami world. And I'm going to show you how I do that today. I'm going to give you a little demo on that because a lot of times we do these paintings and they're kind of translucent and we just don't know how to fix them or how to make them look more finished. And I've got a way to show you to do that. Um, then we also have this paper. This used to be called cloud I think it was called cloud dragon paper. Anyway, it's called Unryu. And Unryu, if you can see, has some beautiful silvery white fibers, very long fibers. Now, if I try to tear this, I'm gonna grab a, a ruler real quick. Now you'll see a lot of rice papers or these kinds of papers, they tear easily. But this one, it's gonna tear. This is not bad, I have a metal ruler here, but there's the long fibers are there. And, you, and they're just, it makes it harder to tear, but in this case, my ruler is pretty sharp, but I did, it had, it snagged a few times there because of the long fibers. But these, these if you actually look at this under a darker, um, something dark, let's see if I grab, this is dark. See, this fibers are more visible, I think you can see. So these are great for, for soji screens and fabulous for candle holders. If you're going to uh, take, a, a, a glass, like a clear glass candle and put this over it, you'll see those fibers coming through with the candlelight. So they're just really gorgeous. Great for, for, uh, for collage as well. So I just wanted to share that one. So this is called 6MMU. It's one of my favorites. It's also a beautiful paper, very strong. And I use it, I like to use it for folding. So that's, and painting and everything. It's just a great paper. Um, then we've had these forever. This is a very basic uh, pad of its sketch paper and made in Japan, 48 sheets, and it's just nice bright white. And it's great for painting, great for drawing and for printmaking. Love this for jelly printing. Uh, there's, and it's kind of on the thickest side. I don't know what the GSM is on this, but it feels like heavier, you know, kind of like crisp and um, you know, a little heavier than maybe some copy paper, but. It's a very nice paper. Love it, especially like I said for jelly printing. Yeah, that's six H is seventy GSM. So yeah, thank it's you. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. So it's in the next one. Thinking of GSMs, um, so this one has been a you know it's, it's just a, supposed to be a practice paper. It's not supposed to be uh, anything but 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 I love it for more than just practice. I like to make art on it. The other one is this one, the 6JM. You can see it's a slightly off white. It's just got a different tone to it. It's much more transparent than the 6H because its GSM is much uh, less. And it has a little, it's just a very nice translucent uh, paper. And it's very strong. And I, I like to use this for a lot of different things, but um, I use this for, it's great as a tracing paper. You can see, I can see my image. It's also great for, uh, what's the, that was just my brain. I just lost it. It's uh, <laughs> the stuff, hot wax, encaustic. It's great for that. It's great for stamping. If you wanted to do pattern making, you can actually stick a pattern underneath and just repeat on top. So this is just a beautiful, beautiful paper. And these are in, are in our kind of sort of basic paper collection. And um, then we go into the Japanese paper as well. They're all Japanese, but the Kozo, which is a beautiful acid-free paper, and Toriniko. I'm going to show you all these. Um, what's different about them? Um, these, this one is. They're beautiful in their own way. I mean, it's amazing, and they're slightly different in color and different in texture and different in transparency. 
So I'm going to show you what is different about them and why they're all great to have. I'm just going to put these down away so I can get to the my table. So the first thing I'm going to just talk about is just using this as a paper to paint on. So I'm just going to use a piece of paper underneath. Actually, I've got this idea I want to show you. <laughs> I've been, I drew this little dragonfly out, sketched him out ahead of time. And the reason I'm going to do this is I'm going to take different paper here, and I'm going to just go through the different kinds of papers and do little dragonflies. Um, and this is Mr. Our, our friend Rue helped me. He inspired me to do some of these things. So I'm going to just show you. Um, this is gonna, I'm going to go through. This is the six jam, the one I just showed you. I'm just going to tear it and, and get a smaller piece here and get it a, a smaller piece to work with. And I'm going to lay it right over my dragonfly. And then I'm going to just grab, I'm going to grab a little ink. And I'm just so this is basically I'm cheating, you know, kind of not really, even though I drew the dragonfly, but I'm going to. Um, since really I want to do something that looks a little more spontaneous, I have this artist crayon that we we have now. These clear blenders. We have uh, even packs coming. I don't know if they're here yet, right? I don't know if they're here yet, Phoebe. But um, coming soon. But the, all right. Um, but we do have the crayons. Part of yeah, the other artist crayon sets that are available. And the reason I'm doing this is kind of a I want to know because this is clear, and I want to use this as a resist. So um, because I have something underneath to work from, I can see, so I, I'm gonna kind of keep where my highlights are gonna be. And I'm just kind of making some little highlights. And this is the only reason I'm doing this is so I know where they, where they are because I can't see what I'm writing um, because this is a clear, uh, it's a clear wax. So there's no way that I would be, would be able to see or remember. So this is just a little hack that I do. It just kind of makes it fun to just try uh, playing with watercolors and and just watching how the paint reacts. Now, here we go. I've got to think I got enough there. Now I feel I can feel it on there, and I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to grab some watercolors and some inks. Or actually, I can just use the watercolors. Here's my watercolor, and I've got. I'm going to grab a brush, and it really doesn't matter what kind of brush I'm using. I'm just going to use a brush that I have and some water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab some color. I'm not sure what color this is yet. Ah, the blue, I don't want that blue. I'm going to try a different color. I'm going to make, I'm going to do this kind of a red. Maybe I'll make a blue, uh, maybe I'll make a, uh, we'll see. We'll just put some color down. And I, what I'm going to do, this is the 6JM. So this is going to have some absorbency. You can just see it's always kind of soaks in. So whenever you work, you just have to, you know, it just goes right in, which is in its way, it's beautiful and, you know, definitely beautiful in, in its own way. And I'm just gonna put some color down. And I know, see that my crayon, because I'm using an absorbent paper, the crayon doesn't really resist. I don't see the light sting, maybe a little bit, but there's really very little, uh, it just soaks in so much. So. That is just a 6 jam, a little bit of resist there, I see. And I'm just going to make little, the little uh, places here. And I have to work quickly with this one because it is so absorbent. And it's kind of a considered a practice paper. So, you know, it's just a little different. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I go quickly. I can get some, I can get some uh, nice fine lines, but I have to move quickly because that's just the way these work. So. I'm just going to do this and leave that alone for now. And I'm going to go to the next one because I really want you to see something uh, different. So here I'm just going to leave my little, so here I've got my little dragonfly essence, which I think is fun and I can come back to it later. But this paper is very thin and I don't really paint on it as often as I do other of the, of the other papers. Like this one, I'm going to grab the 6T. Now 6T is called, I'm going to do it this way. Um, it's Torinoco, which is another, it's, um, it's an unusual paper. It's uh, sized a little bit and it, you'll see the difference what happens. I'm going to just do a little, the same exact thing. I'm just going to make a little kind of a highlights and I'm going to do a little, just kind of using my little cheat sheet underneath, kind of to just get my little, just to where I want the lights to be. And 
if any of Rue's crew are here, if anyone's here, you're going to know there's a, a little trick he showed me last week, I think it was, Phoebe, right? Um, I saw something that just yeah. totally, it just, it just gave me such a, it was so much fun. And I'm going to show you what he showed me. So now I've made my little, I've got my little area here and I'm going to use the same colors, just essentially, and you watch what happens. You see how it's floating on top of the paper. Um, it's this paper lets me, it kind of makes, it sort of feels like, like a regular paper. I mean, this is like, this is like watercolor paper, the way it resists. It's a, in like, see how the colors are going in to each other. Now, of course, you know, with the right regular rice paper, this wouldn't happen. You know, you would have, you would have, uh, these colors would definitely uh, be soaking in right now. So I'm just trying to do this real quick. I'm just to kind of playing with some colors here. Um, of course, I've got, these are pretty opaque colors, but if I had my little transparent colors, I could have a different look. But here, I'm gonna just take some dark, maybe some black here, or I could use some black ink, just like regular ink here. Just grab some of that. It's really better to have a separate brush for your inks though, than from, for if you're using definitely watercolor and ink, they just need to be separated. So I'm gonna just grab a different brush for that. Wanda just, said, Wanda shared earlier that she also enjoys watercolor on the sketch paper pad. So love that. And then yay. she also said she has that watercolor set. Yes, and she loves the opaque green, which I also love. Oh, the, the Celadon color. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful And then color. Jackie had a question. She was wondering if you could use this crayon instead of brisket, which I'm not familiar with what brisket yes. is. Yes, now frisket, of course, is a liquidy kind of stuff um, um, that you could paint on. You could use it on this if you want it. Now, I want to show you the, the Rue thing. I've got to show you this. Okay, so you see my little dragonfly. It's happening. And then, and yes, um, yes, you could, this you could use instead of frisket. But the thing is, you're going to have a little different, um, you don't have as much control. So you, you know, with the frisket, you can paint it on. And with the with this, of course, you're gonna just kind of color it on and it gives it a little rougher look, but I think it's kind of fun. So I'm, doing, I'm totally doing non-dragonfly colors, but I just wanted to show you, get this outline of this thing, this little piece here. And then here's what he showed me and I thought it was such a cool thing. He was like this beautiful, I'm gonna put some, yellow like right up in here oops <laughs> a little too much it should have dried i'm going to try it again here karen try it again try try so i'm just putting some yellow right up here and maybe some yellow down here and then this is what he did i don't know if it's going to look the same but let's try it yeah spray it <laughs> so there see how it just changed everything and i'll let that dry but this as you notice you might notice that there's no soaking through onto the other side so I've got this beautiful painting and it's all floating. So I got to let that, let it dry, but there's, it didn't soak through to the other side because it's the 6T and the difference between this one it soaked through and this one did not. So, you know, this, there's so many variables that you can do and I'll set that aside and see how that looks. Now that, so now that was my dragonfly trick. It wasn't as good as it was the first time. I'll have to do practice that more again. Now this is a um, Kozo. And what I like about Kozo, and I know I'm going all over the place with the papers, but that's just kind of what happens when you get a bunch of papers and different papers. But the Kozo, I notice has a very, um, it's kind of, this actually feels almost exactly the same on both sides. This is a highly uh, sought after paper. It's a very, it's one of, it's our best paper that we have. It's really gorgeous. And I actually did this with my group uh, on Monday, I think it was. And I think well, if it's the same Wanda from Texas that, <laughs> This is, she, she will know, she will recognize this because anybody that was, we, uh, we did this the other day. Of course, I don't know if I did this with them, but I made this little stamp out of, an, uh, out of some eraser material. And then I have these stamp pad inks. And I thought, what was what I really like about this? And it's gonna soak through and I don't mind, it's gonna show a nice little mark. But what I love about this, I'm just gonna, I won't do the, I won't bore you with the whole thing, but I wanna just show you how gorgeous the Kozo takes these inks. So I'm just gonna stamp uh, maybe up here. I'll just do it right up here and I'll press and I will 
you see how gorgeous that ink is. And then it kind of, well, this one, it didn't soak through all the way. I hope that's the code. Yep, that's 6K. So I'm getting this, I can make these gorgeous patterns and I'm now I'm gonna get inky all over myself. That's the end of that. I'm gonna, once I start working with stamp pads, I start to, I become messy. <laughs> but it is really a fun uh, thing to do. You can make patterns and you can make, let's just see, pick up a different color. Of course, who knows what's on these pads? It could be, uh, they did, that color was supposed to be purple. It came out kind of a dark, whatever color that is. But you can, you can make beautiful uh, patterns and make papers like tissue papers and gift wraps and things that no one else could, no one else would have. <laughs> It'd be, it's one of a kind. No one else is gonna have this stuff. Here, I'll just do a little black and just show you. And I think I'll show you the finished paper without putting it through through the stamping process forever here, but I just want to show you how fun it is and how you could make your own every, you know, your own custom papers. And I love um, this particular eraser it was such an easy thing because it's just cutting uh, little notches in it. And it was took you know, five, 10 minutes or so. Um, and this little guy is the same thing, just little bits here. I'll just grab this here. And show you how versatile, but I could cover this whole thing and it'd take me a while, which I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to put you through that, but you can see. Yeah. You know, I think, um, so James hopped in and said he missed the intro. What are those pads? And I think he might be asking about actually the stamp pads. Um, sure. If you want to mention, and then James, correct me sure. for misunderstanding. Yeah. yeah, I probably didn't mention them because I didn't, but now I will for sure. These are so cute. <laughs> My, um, these are from Ranger. And actually, you get them in a set like this. And you get these little adorable little, um, here, I'll show you. It's archival ink, mini archival ink storage tin. You get everything. You get all these great colors. And I like them because they're slightly different. They're not your normal. They're kind of a, a muted colors. So you get these, you know, all these wonderful 12 pay. I don't think it was expensive either. I think I got it on Amazon, but Ranger. So Ranger archival ink. And the reason I like their inks they won't fade over time they in their waterproof so let's say you want to do a you know you're going to use the inks and then i could watercolor over that and it won't bleed so that's why i like those um that's so i could even watercolor over that but i'm going to scooch, scooch that over and perfect thank you that is what he was asking about so oh, good. no yeah definitely <laughs> stop me and ask so me yeah. yeah definitely and stop and you know ask me what you know what i'm doing because <laughs> sometimes i gotta go crazy Oh, you're um, good. And then I forgot to say earlier, but for the dragonfly um, yeah. that Karen sprayed here, you could also see on the Instagram or I guess Facebook too, I think it went on both the other dragonfly that she did before um, with Rue. <laughs> we were actually all on Zoom when she did well, that. Well, that was a wonky one too, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But it was so fun. And then actually, quick note, James was actually asking about the foam pads and I think he means your stamp, which yes, was hand created, right? Okay, so yes, yeah, so like, okay, uh, just a little eraser, you know, the uh, vinyl erasers. You can get stuff like this from the dollar store. You can get, uh, this is a, a eraser material that I like to use from Japan, but um, you can search looking for uh, stamp carving material and it would be a vinyl eraser or vinyl stamp carving material. And I used an X-Acto knife, really easy peasy. I mean, this was so easy. I just took, my piece, you know, rectangle, and I used an X-Acto knife and I cut and at an angle on this side and I cut another angle and I pulled off the material. So this where the notches are, that's where I pulled off the material. And I, these just took seconds. I mean, we should do a little stamp carving thing one day, right? <laughs> but really it didn't take yeah. long. And you could make, you can make something as easy as this, or you can make something as detailed as you want, because it's just amazing stamp carving. Look it up. It's amazing. So this is um, this is the, the 6T again, and which is what I love about this is that when you're working with it, you can go slow. You can go slow as you want, make little nice little fine lines because it floats on top. It's just floating. There's actually no, I'm actually not having any uh, soaking through. So the, it just floats so I can draw very fine lines and get very small details, which you know you can do with the rice regular paper, but I'll show you something here. So I'm able to make these little lines and I can do some watercolors later. So it's more like a drawing paper, 
like just like your standard drawing paper. It doesn't soak through any, no ink showing through, but it's got its own, it's its own beauty. Um, I like it because I can take my time. And this is sort of my old traditional way of drawing is taking time, um, taking my time to just make the line or whatever I'm doing. So I can make little tiny little lines. This is with a, you can do this also with a pen. I'm gonna grab a uh, marker and just show you here is a marker, just as like a multi-liner, but you can do the same thing. You can draw lines and it doesn't bleed through and it keeps the lines straight. So there's just nice stuff. So you can doodle I on it, draw on it. Noko has been like a huge hit and actually a lot of stores keep selling out of it. <laughs> and people are, are they? All kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, that's why, Um, yeah, for a while we were actually like needing to restock like really, way faster than we thought we needed to because we weren't expecting people to fall in love with this paper so quickly yeah so hard. Well, it's a, i think um, yeah, yeah they're doing everything on this paper drawing painting like mixed media everything yes so i yes i'd love to see what other people do because really it is it gives it you, it lends itself to any create pretty much anything you want to do on paper and also for the traditional if you're doing ink painting like uh traditional sumi type um, where you're working using the brush, the stroke of the brush, you're, you're still going to get, it's an amazing stuff, but this I'm allowing, it's allowing me to do more styles that I kind of am accustomed to, which is kind of letting the color, watercolor actually work itself on the paper, um, float and then kind of move and mix itself on the paper. With the Sumi painting, I can't do that with regular absorbent uh, papers. So this one, this one, this one's kind of, no wonder it's popular because it's just so, um, it's just so versatile. So, you know, you can do all kinds of things. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm just doodling, but you kind of get the idea um, of how it works. And then when I put the darker color here, it's just gonna work more like a, a traditional watercolor paper, just like that. Now, the other one though, if you grab the, let's see, I'm gonna grab a little, of the Gossam. So, okay, 6G. Here's, and I'm going to try, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, except I'm going to move this out of the way. So I'm going to do, I'm going to try to attempt the same thing. Remember, I had this brush with some ink. So I'm just going to grab that in the here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go as slow as I did on this one. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So, I'm going to just like your Tony Nunkel flower. We got a little, little flurry of hearts. Oh, really? On this one? Oh. <laughs> Well, this one's gonna be different. <laughs> I'm gonna go just as slow. So watch what happens. See, remember, I'm gonna kind of repeat the same thing. So what's happening is I'm getting a beautiful, I mean, it's it's a beautiful bold line, but you see how much thicker it is. And then what happens is it soaks through and that's the, because of the absorbency of it, which is fine. So here, I'm gonna just try some fun little things. Let's see, I try to repeat a little bit, but I can't really, do exactly because it's just different. So I'm just gonna make some lines kind of, but you see how I can vary the width of my lines by depending on how long I pause it. So when I move fast, I get little thin lines. So I'll, I'll do a little, uh, I'll go quickly and I can get nice little thin, small, you know, lines that I'm looking for. But um, like if I wanna make grass, I just have to move fast, move quickly. And then you get those lines. And then for uh, for you know pausing gives you that, so that's the beauty about the, this too. It's got its own um, own uh, special properties. And here I'll just try to do the same thing. When I do the flower petals, way different. When I work, when I try to do this flower petal, I'm going to try, and I'm going to have to make a petal, but I have to go quickly. See what happened? It goes right in. So it's going to be a different feel. Um, this one, what I'm going to do is dip it in the orange and tip it in the red, and that's gonna give me that uh, effect that I got with the watercolor on this. So I'll do it again. I'm gonna dip it in the orange, or maybe even dip it in yellow. And then I'll tip it in red. So you can see just a tip of my brush goes in the red, and then I'm gonna make another petal. And you can see what happens is I'm able to get some of that depth that I'm looking for. And maybe just I'll dot some of it right there. So I'm able to get, it's a different flower, it's a different style. <laughs> I kind of like this one better. <laughs> but that's because you have to really, um, this is something that like, takes a, a lot of practice to get uh, shapes, petal shapes, 
like, you know, just to get little, there we go, that's better. So there's a flower petal there. And I had to get it switch modes here. And then I can take my, get my ink and start to make the little, uh, whatever that's called, <laughs> stem. And then I can mix black ink with some of my green and I can make, a, I'm gonna make a little, kind of a greenish black color. I mean, it's gonna show more here, but I'm just gonna go, and this time I'm gonna just kind of bring it down and see how when I went quickly, I made a nice fine line. So I need a different brush now to make, uh, I'm gonna make a little stem here, small one, and maybe another one here, just short little stems. And then I have to use a different brush and I'll just go back to this one to make the uh, leaf. I'm gonna use this gorgeous celadon that you like. And I'm gonna do the same. This is a light green, so I'm gonna tip it. I've got it, the light green dipped in light green. And then I'm gonna tip it in a dark, oh, kind of a, this dark color. It's like a turquoisey color. And now I'm just gonna make a leaf. Here we go and see what happened. I just created a variegation and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna re-dip it. I'm just gonna see if I can get that same thing. So you could see I made just by, is how I loaded the brush rather than in the watercolors that we're accustomed to, at least that I've been trained. You, you let the water do the work. This time you gotta let the paint do the work and you dip it beforehand. You can see this variegations in uh, shape or you can see little lines. I love this little stray. And here I'm just gonna put some color in here. Now this one, I'm just gonna add some color into that. And then we've got like grass, you can, so there's just, I love painting on this material because it's just so um, versatile and what, you know, the kind of marks that you can make with simple materials and see how it's soaked through. So that's our 6G and I love, I'm gonna just do a little, little grass thing here. If I can just do a little bit of grass like down here, I'm just gonna take my brush and make my brush do the, the shapes rather than letting, you know, doing the drawing. And also it's really cool and I don't see, you know, I don't think you see this yet, but when this dries, the pre previous strokes that I had done will show, they, the, the layers will show. So I see a little bit of that. You'll see it when it dries more, um, if you had a close up of it, but you, it's really fun to, to work with. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm trying to think of- Our viewers of loved that. People are saying it's beautiful and so pretty and it really is. And I love what you did with the colors too. It's, it's like really a happy spring. These are happy spring uh, paintings, right? <laughs> yeah, and later, maybe when it dries a little bit more too, we got to get a close up so everyone can see what did happen with the leaves and yes. the petals. And, and I'll yeah. show that again. I'm gonna grab another sheet of this 6G to show you a little on a bigger scale of what I mean. So that- you Ooh, Yeah, Virginia says she loves making the brush work for you, yes. Great, okay, so I'm gonna take some of that celadon um, and my palette is getting really dirty, but I should have a big bucket of water by my side, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to just deal with it. And I'm gonna tip it again in the turquoise or yeah, I guess it's turquoise. I'm not sure if they call it that though. Um, and I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make some leaves, like just some leaf shapes. Whoop, that one. See how it just kind of made a beautiful little. Now that's this with this brush. Now watch when I do it with a different brush. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, different brushes. If you have a collection of uh, painting brushes, just keep them because you never know. Each brush has its own personality. It's amazing. Just like well, this one I can see something happening here. There's a different stroke. So I've got a little much longer uh, stroke out of that. And I'm gonna keep that one. I like that one. I'm gonna dip it again and see if I can get another. I'm just gonna get another stroke here. So I've got this sort of plant thing happening. And the reason I'm doing it, these big strokes and I'm gonna use light colors on purpose with a dip of the dark in the middle. I'm just gonna make some layer, kind of make it go in little layers. And hopefully we'll, when this dries, you'll see each layer. So that it's amazing how this works um, because the rice paper will allow those layers to show through. It's amazing. And let's see, I'll grab another, I'll just do another here maybe. And here, there. It's some, it's some tropical, who knows what that is, some tropical thing. And then I'm gonna grab some black ink and I'm just gonna just go ahead and create that little part that part of the flower. And if anybody knows, tell me, please. <laughs> I'm kind of like, what kind, what is that? This part, these are the petals. 
And then what's that? <laughs> if anybody, you know, maybe I'll give them an extra prize <laughs> if they can tell. I'm always forgetting. What that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always forgetting what this part is. That's the stem. We have leaves and petals, but what is that? <laughs> the little part that the petals come from. I guess that's what we call it. So I'm going to take my green and black kind of a combo here, and I'm just going to create a, a little, like some kind of stem there, you know, like that. And now I'll just take some more of this gorgeous, maybe mix a little yellow with it. And what's great about these colors, they are mixable. I mean, they are, even though they're kind of opaque, if, as long as you keep the same family. So don't ever put together this orange in the blue. I think you'll get, you'll see, I'll show you what you can get. You won't like it. But if you always mix like colors in the same family, yellow with your reds, yellow with your green, that's fine. But you just don't want to go opposite of the color wheel. Then it will kind of make a muddy color. And that's, you know, we don't want mud. We would, you know, we want beautiful colors. So I'm just going to We, gonna we go got ahead. some ladies the well, com commented that it's the sepal, which I think I'm pronouncing correctly. Okay. What's the choice? choice? Yes. Thank you. What was that called? The sepal? Sepal, I believe. S-E-P-A-L. I had to Google it and I used the oh, little sepal. pronunciation. Okay. Guy. That's great. Thank you. I love it. I really, I need that. I've got to remember that. The sepal. Petals, sepal, stem, leaf. <laughs> So here I've got this little tropical thing going and um, I just wanted to show you how I just dipped a little bit of this light green with some yellow and I'm able to get that transition from the green to the yellow just by just by that little dip and just playing with the brush and getting the shapes that I want without much different. I mean, these are this is way different than than when you're working um, with a watercolor or watercolor paper. So back just going to throw in some little marks here. And let's see. And oh, another thing about rice paper is it, it doesn't, it let, makes you honest. Like you can't go over something and hope that you can fix it. It's, it's there. That every mark that I just made is not, it's going to be there. So that's, it's a good, it keeps you honest. So like these little things, and it's spontaneous. You don't have to uh, think, oh, you know, I want to just, I have to, these are little stamens, right? I think these are called Stamen, uh, stamen, whatever they are. <laughs> well, Melinda also offered that it could be the receptacle. So just according to Google, because now we are learning all kinds of things, I guess the <laughs> all kinds that of encloses the petals. <laughs> and then the receptacle, I think, is on the inside. I don't know. I just looked it up. And I, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Thank you. So learning a lot. That's what so we want. I want to, yeah. The flower stalk and the parts of the flower attached. Oh, that could be it. Yeah. So learning something new every day is such a nice, such a fun thing. So this is kind of a lily, Easter lily. It's kind of a stylized Easter lily, I, I think. So but just going to let that dry. It's going to dry a little bit lighter. And there was something I wanted to share with you. You know, when you do all these little um, fun pictures and you're like, oh, I like them, but they kind of look flimsy. This one isn't not, but some of the paintings kind of come out flimsy after they dry. Um, I'm going to grab my little piece here so I can do it for you. All right, so let's say like this little fun little, my little dragonfly that I did with Rue. And I, this is the one that looks really good. I love it. Now I, I should probably save this so I can remember, <laughs> remember how I did it because it's just so much fun. And I can look at, compare it to the one I just did. And then this one still isn't dry. And I see what I need to do. I see what I need to do. But yeah. I'll just let that dry. But here's what's something you can do. And I put my little signature stamp using the same racer carving thing. That's something I can even do with this one. Because I can just like where with this little splotch, I'm going to put the a seal right there and then I finish it. But let's say you want these, see how it's kind of wrinkly, you know, um, it's normal. That's for the paper to get wrinkly. So now I've got just a piece of, uh, this is probably Bristol. I think it's not very heavy stuff, but I just wanted to show you a quick little demo on a uh, few um, getting your papers, uh, how you how you basically fuse your papers together. So I'm I just want to let you know, Peggy said good information about the colors. It's also very helpful. Oh, good, good, oh, great. Okay, so I've got this stuff. If you know what this is, Nori Pace. I've got the studio jar. It's a big, nice, fat jar. Um, this is. You can use methyl cellulose, but this is already mixed up. It's already done. 
um, and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to use um, some clear water. Of course, I have a dirty, uh, very dirty uh, dish here. So I'm just going to spritz some water on the back of my paper. You can do this with all your rice papers, by the way. Um, you can you can flatten them by because they take water or this one's the Torinoco, so this one's going to act a little different. Um, but it's such a good paper that it, it's wet. It's called wet strength. You can have it has strength when wet, which is really not a lot. A lot of papers don't. So it does have good wet strength. Uh, these most all of our papers do. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this nori paste. It should be diluted, but instead I'm just going to brush it. And I need to be, probably have the wet brush. <laughs> it should be thin because I've got it a little too thick on there. But I'm actually doing it really bad. <laughs> it should be, I'm just going to put a little water and a little paste and just kind of mix it up, thin it up a little bit because that's just too much. You don't want to have it gloppy on the back. So I'm just kind of thinning it a little bit so that it's more of like a melted ice cream instead of glop jello or whatever. So now there, that feels a lot better. It's going on really smooth. And normally this is the, this is not the absorbent rice paper. This is the Torinoco. So I've never fused the Torinoco. So now I'll know how it works. <laughs> so you see what I did is I, I sprayed it and brushed it. Now it's kind of laying flat again. And I should have pre-wet this one, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to be a brat. No, I'm going to pre, I'm going to dampen that. And the reason I'm dampening this is I want it to swell. I want the fibers in this also to swell a little bit. Give it a little time. Even if you have, um, if you want to, if you're using a like a rag cotton, you can bathe, you know, put it in water and, and uh, get that paper to swell because that's going to help you with the lay flat. Um, that's going to help that paper to lay flat again. So I don't think this is cotton paper I've got in my hand, but you know, just pretend it's, let's say it's 140 pound hot press watercolor paper or something like that. Anything that's good quality paper. Now, what I'm going to do is I've, I've got a good amount. I think that's wet enough. I'm just gonna lay it. Ooh, I better be careful there. Now I'm just going to turn it over. You see, you've got it nice. And I'm just gonna, whoop. I am going to just press it out. Now I normally, should have my Baron with me, but I don't. I'm getting some color on my hand. That's okay. So I'm hoping that I didn't get a bunch of glue on my on the front of it, and I didn't. So that's good. Now, if you do get some, um, you know, if it smears your color or your paper, um, no worries. I'm going to trim this probably because it's not completely. Uh, it's not. Um, it's got like the edge isn't completely straight. So another way is to also burnish over it with your hands or a baron, something to get all the areas smooth. All right. Normally, and I should grab my baron. I'm just going to grab it real quick. There it is. This is what you want right here. <laughs> if you're doing anything like this, just this is the best way to smooth it. So what you notice is that now this painting is now like more opaque and more finished. It is uh, now I have to let it dry though. And I just want to make sure I have all the bubbles out and I do. Just make sure you have, you know, when you're doing this, uh, press from the center and go outward or to the outer edges. So press center, moving out like this. If you have a, like a spoon or anything, but anything like this. So now I finished this, this completely changed the way it looks and feels. And uh, I'll let that dry and I've got a nice little piece. But that's how you would do the any amount any of your pictures, even these. This actually mounts a lot better because it is absorbent. It, it becomes one piece. I don't know if I have one. Oh, yeah, I can use this. I can do this one and show you what I mean. So this dragonfly, it's not completely dry, but see how buckle it is. Now I'm going to just do a quick. I'm just going to show you what I mean really quick. Just going to cut this. How's any more questions that I can answer while I'm or is it all good? Well, people are very glad that you went over that. Actually, someone said that they're so glad um, to learn how to do this process of fusing the two papers. And then Jackie says she loves that process, which it is really cool to watch. And I get that it's like a total experience to do it too. Now I'm going to do two. I'm going to fuse. This is Kozo paper. So I'm going to take Kozo, two pieces of Kozo, if I can find one. This is a piece of Kozo. Or this is six jam. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to take. All right, so I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to 
actually what I could do this time, I'm going to put the paste on the paper just because probably was better, would have been better. I'm going to stick some paste like about that much. It's like for this amount, I don't need a lot. Keep it, you know, get it to the consistency that won't tear the paper. Not you want it to just be uh, nice and wet. Now, what's going to happen with this? It's going to totally go through onto my paper. So um, I usually use a piece of something like oh, I, I've got it somewhere. In fact, I'm going to grab it real quick because if I don't do this, here's this is really important is to take like even the mineral paper would work if you have something that's uh, not absorbent. Okay, so I'm going to just put this like here because that's got to, I have to have something that's like a piece of glass, a piece of masonite, something that's not going to soak through because you're going to need that, especially with this paper because it's going to go all, it's going to go through. So I'm just going to put it on and you'll see, and I actually should spritz this too. This is going to be wrinkly too, but I'm going to fuse these together. I'm just going to have to wait for that to swell up and to get um, completely swollen up so that the wrinkles, I can remove the wrinkles. And I, this does work better, like I said, on a piece of glass, but I'm going to, I've never tried it on the mineral paper, so we'll see. <laughs> And you can, and if you're not, if you're looking for something completely wrinkle free, you can do that. Just kind of work out the bubbles and just gently brush. And I'm using a very soft brush. Um, you can use a sheep hair brush, which we have. Um, there's a, they're cheap and work. I wouldn't use a chip brush, you know, those bristle brushes that might be just way too much, uh, too much. Uh, you might just tear into the paper. But like I said, these papers are wet, they have a good amount of uh, strength for the being wet so it's all good so i'm just going to do it partially i'm not going to do the whole thing and now i'm going to lay this paper on top but i'm going to do um, a little spritz and this is probably a very unorthodox way of doing it but i want you to see how you can fuse the papers together and i'm going to normally i would use uh some deli paper or something but i'm just grabbing what i have in front of me so same thing, just get all the bubbles out. And I'm noticing some of the paint because it wasn't dry. It's coming through. Well, let's see what happens. See, so yeah, that's because it wasn't dry. But see how it fused. And then when it dries completely, I'm just going to leave that alone. And that it's going to become double the thickness. And that's how I get uh, this like here. This is, this, this, is this is tissue paper and rice paper. And now I have something that's got heavy, you know, some heavy weight to it instead of, you know, so it's not that delicate anymore. So that's how you can get that kind of, uh, that kind of look. So see how it's going to go. It'll look great when it dries. It's almost, you know, that'll be pretty. And then after that's dry, I'll probably go back over with some ink just to kind of bring out details of the, of the um, dragonfly. And then also the glue is going to help size it so that I can go over it with ink without it soaking through and I can get finer lines. So I think that's about all, um, that unless anybody has some questions or well, I would like to see something else, but I think that's all I had for you. Now, let me go and just take a quick look again. Um, you know, Jean also mentioned though, thank you for teaching us this. And I agree, I think it's so helpful to have this kind of information. That came out so gorgeous. I love those. Wow. Aren't this fun? So the very last yeah. part, I could finish it off. So here's how you, even if it doesn't look finished, I think I've shown this, I don't know, several times this month, but I have to show you. These are little carved, little carved uh, seals that I made out of just eraser material. And I'm going to grab my favorite color. That's great looking for seals. And it's called, it's a different color that's in that set. It's carnation red in that same brand. Instead of using this, the expense, you know, the stuff that comes from Japan, it's beautiful, but it's toxic and, you know, it's oil based and all that. This is a beautiful color. It kind of reminds me of that color, that uh, sort of a, what's it called? It's a certain type of red. I can go, I should have gone bigger. But anyway, I have bigger seals for bigger paintings. Like here, I've got one here that's kind of fun. That's probably too big. I'm just going to show you. Why not? This is another initial, my initials, but in a very stylized way. And so it makes it uniquely yours when you do that. So you can just put it on wherever you want. And there it is. <laughs> See my initials, K-E-P. <laughs>
Yeah, so that finishes that off and then I'll just let those dry. They're still wet, so I can't really, I mean, that one's pretty close to being dry. So those were fun. And then later I'll go back probably with a little line of black after it dries, just to give that more definition. Karen, do you know um, what ginwashi is? Julie's asking Gin if we have a washi paper similar to ginwashi. No, I think that's gin, uh, is that G-I-N, ginwashi? Oh, yeah. Jinwashi, Jinwashi. 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 Yeah, we used to, you know, Yasutomo used to have a Jinwashi years and years ago. Stopped. And we had like some uh, very uh, strong kind of corn, fi really strong fibers that were really stiff. And if that's the stuff that she's talking about, um, I haven't seen that around in a long time. I don't know why, but sometimes the paper makers, you know, a particular house, you know, a particular place that makes paper, they stop making it. I don't know. Um, I haven't seen it in a long, long time. But it would be considered under the decorative paper category. Mm. Um, so it has a lot of texture and um, very kind of big, kind of they, they're really interesting. Um, I remember we used to have it, but no more. Uh, I'm Googling what it looks like. And yeah, we don't have anything quite like that exactly, but maybe the Unryu paper is sort of similar. Maybe the closest thing we have, which well, might be- Well, it's got the most fibers, but it is, and I yeah. should show you the Unryu when you paint on it. I don't really like painting on Unryu for like paintings like this, and I'll show you why. Um, because, um, but I do love it for uh, coloring and creating more, uh, like dyeing it, I do dip. I do some shibori with it and other things. But let's say um, when you're painting with it, you'll you'll see the fibers. See how the see what's happening? The fibers drink up, which maybe could be a really some people might like that. But see how the fibers draw the color out. So for painting, uh, for just like painting, painting, I wouldn't. But for making marks, absolutely. Like if I just take this and I start playing with the colors. Um, just kind of making color, just making it color, colored. And then I have it colored on both sides. When that dries, I've got a beautiful colored paper that's colored on both sides. So, I mean, I can just kind of do some marks. And, but I, to try to do a representational piece with this, I prefer not, but um, I think that it makes a beautiful, just a beautiful paper just for making colorful paper. So he, this marks like that. Yeah, and I think what you were describing earlier is exactly, Julie says that's exactly what she was talking about. So that's good for me to know because we're um, always looking out for new papers. So that's something to have on my radar. Right. So when you when you go to Japan or <laughs> grab some, get some of the, this paper because um, you, we used to have some other papers that were so beautiful. They were um, called, one was called, it was a rayon paper. It was all rayon and it had uh, beautiful silk screened patterns, white, uh, little, just delicate patterns. And then it would become invisible when you put glue, you know, put the, you would, the paper itself would be invisible, but the white would show through. And it was so gorgeous. We called it a ghost paper back then. So I'm not sure what it would be now. Sounds cool. It's really, it was beautiful. So those kind of be fun to bring stuff, more decorative papers back in. But but they, right now we're showing, we really have a good selection of art papers that are for creating your own, um, your own art. So this, this, you'll see what I'll do with this later, um, like in a few days, because it's going to take long, it won't take a few days, but I want to cover a, a lot of surface here, and then I'm going to wait for it to dry, and I'll turn it into a paper that I can fold and do something with. And it's going to be really pretty because it's colored on both sides. Just playing at this point. <laughs> So you now you know what the 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 Unri also is intensely. It takes wet. It's it's a uh, very strong when when you get it wet. Like I'll even show you for tearing. It's beautiful if you want to tear it to make um, collages like soft edged collages. Like here, let me show you on the dark side of this here. So let's say you know see how the fi fibers are really noticeable. So you can just uh, put the glue on that and the fibers will just, the silvery fibers will show. And then this is translucent. So you can layer um, pieces underneath. So that would be really something to do. Once you, you put some like uh, PVA glue, uh, the paper will disappear. Well, not disappear, but it will get less 
So it will become more translucent. Another thing you can put on it, and I'll show you real quick. It's kind of, you could put stuff like this on it. Wax, <laughs> just furniture wax. And you can take it and to make it more translucent, you can put it on your paper. Of course, I'd wait for that paint to dry. But um, I can make this paper translucent. And, you know, if I'd made marks before, see how it's now becoming translucent? The more I add to it, and the stronger it will become too. So there's so many things you can do with this paper. Yeah, another little trick. I love that. You know, actually one artist, um, Yvonne from uh, Focus had given me a painting that she had done of a Totoro on Undu paper. And I don't know if she used other materials, but it was like, Really, um, she was able to get like defined lines and everything. I shipped it off to a uh, Niamta, but oh, I wonder if she treated it ahead of time. You know, like put something on it because yeah, maybe. I, I mean, you know what I do? I just did a project. I should show you. It's it was so pretty. I did. I used a lot of rice paper. Like, um, well, actually, this one here. This is a piece that I a little piece that I did where I used, I uh, dipped, you can see this black background, it's really su super strong. That is uh, rice paper, that's, so that's the rice paper. And it, if the soft, very cloudy soft edge is because I put the glue on it. And now I can, then after it dried, I was able to do fine lines over it. So I'm wondering if that's kind of how, oh. you know, you get those fine lines. Because I've never been able to get a fine line just straight with the raw Unri. I always have to put something on top of it. But I would love to see that piece. Maybe take a photo of it so I can see it. <laughs> I will definitely have to take a photo. And then um, Donna, I think Donna asked if she could see a, a picture of the card that Miss June Jones sent me before. That's the one I was mentioning to you earlier, where she sewed, I think, paper to paper. So I oh, do you have, took a little do you have a picture. picture? Yeah, you know what? I'll actually, um, I think it's time for our giveaway anyway. So I okay. will, as you're working on that, remove spotlight from there and bring the spotlight over to, to me. Hello, everyone. I'm going to show off June's card. Oh, look at that. I'm going to have to figure out if I could like zoom in closer. Oh, uh, no. I might have to remove the background. Yeah, filter, your background isn't going to be, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> None. You can see it's always a work in progress. We'll try and block it. But yeah, this is the beautiful card that June gave me. She mailed it to me. And I don't know if the camera like really picks it up. I, I just have like a little webcam thing. But the roses are stitched on. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. I love it so much. I'm gonna um maybe I could just post a picture. It'll be much like better. Cherishing. You're cherishing it. That's so nice. I, I have it right in front of me actually when I work. It's that's a very sweet card. I love it. Yeah, it's so sweet. Thank you, June. I've said it before, but thank you. All right. <laughs> um, so I'm adding our last giveaway uh, participant. So what are we giving um, away, Phoebe? So we're gonna give away an assortment of papers. Let me just put the little last slip in there. All right, for Melina. All right, there we go. Put it in my little origami box. Um, but yeah, today, oh yeah, it's a beautiful card that June made. It is. Um, glad I was able to share it, it's beautiful. So I'm glad I'm able to have other people see it too. Um, so today we're gonna have up for a giveaway some papers. So for sure, here, let me hold Karen on so it feels like more exciting. No, the two of us. Yeah, there you There's go. <laughs> yeah, and everyone that way can see your sunflower pin. See my messy table too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. Um, so for sure, we'll give away, I want to give away a Torinoko um, and then also the 6H, um, which is the student paper pad. And then Karen, do you want to suggest one more? That we throw in there the, the gossan if you want to because it's just it's so beautiful and you have 6h torinoko and gossan yes perfect okay. and i think that's really good because those are um the torinoko and the gossan that you did the comparison of the flowers in the beginning i know a lot of people are excited about that and then the 6h is a good one just to have a staple and to practice on especially 6h is new. good to do practice like if you want to do a flower but you're a little nervous to do it on the gossan or the torinoko use the 6h because it's a good practice paper Yes. 
Yeah. And we're also going to um, bring out some new papers. So we're launching three, no, sorry, two new papers, Asagami and Mashi soon. So we'll be back to show you guys what those papers are like when those are avail available. Um, and then Rue popped in. Hello, Rue. Hey. He said he'd like a banana popsicle. I don't know what that means. Well, we did a dragonfly in your honor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he means a banana popsicle origami pin. Oh, there you go. And you know what? I'm just going to, since we haven't done the drawing yet, these are going to be truly, truly the last entries. I'm going to add Val, Chris, Ross. Let's get them in there. All my drawers yeah. are open. <laughs> you know on my secret. They've been watching. And they're probably just getting to pop their names in there. All right, time for the drawing. Sorry, everyone. I work by a, a hospital, a few hospitals actually, and a little airport. So there's always some noise in the background. Right. Never know. Don't hear it. All right. Our winner today is. Julie C. from La Canada, La Canada, California. La Canada, California. All right. La Canada, California. Julie, are you there? Just drop a comment to let us know. All right. And I think we'll just wait a moment for that. Um, yes, yeah, some people are excited. Chris, someone else had earlier mentioned too that they're looking forward to trying the paper. Anita. We know Anita. Hello, Anita. Oh, Anita. Is it Anita T? Anita T. Oh. Hi, Anita. Oh, everyone's so sweet. Congratulations. Oh, there's Julie. Julie has claimed oh, her prize. All right, Julie, Hi. I'll message you um, separately just so we could work out the details of us getting the your goodies to you. And everyone else, thank you all for joining us so much. And um, Feel free to reach out to us if you need any help finding these papers from your local art supply store. You can also just, you know, go from a call or go walk in and see what they do have. Um, we have so many papers that there's a chance they might not carry everything that we offer, but they'll very likely carry at least some, uh, probably the 6-H pad or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just give them a call or walk around and see what they have. And please, um, you know, join us again for our next one, which I think is actually going to be hosted on uh, YouTube. So we're going to try that out, but we will make an announcement beforehand. Um, and that'll be a first for us. So, you know, we'll experiment with that. And if people seem to like it, as people have requested already that we do try it on YouTube, then we might um, just hang out on there and leave these space or leave the live streams up on YouTube and migrate over there. So thank you all so much. And we hope you all have a good weekend and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye.